let's go back through this tournament a little bit. Uh, you, you had such a great week on some really tough conditions, and then, of course, you move over here, completely new lanes, uh, and you kind of have to start over. How tough is that? Uh, very tough, but as I said earlier, everybody's on equal playing ground. So um, the conditions over here played more to my advantage. It seemed like the lanes, uh, the newer topography of the lanes played much better. So it was really nice how the oil blended on the lanes and, again, was a, was a true advantage for me. In your first match is Carolyn Doran Ballard, and we all know how bad Carolyn wants this tournament. So what's the feeling there? Uh, Carolyn, she's finished second umpteen times in this event. She's always there. She's always a fierce competitor. Um, I, I caught a lucky break against her, and then she unfortunately caught a bad break. It just carried, gave me some momentum and, and led me into the match. But, God, if there's ever a, a great bowler to talk about or mention in a Hall of Famer, that's Carolyn Doran Ballard. And then up next is Liz, and it just seemed like all week long you guys were one and two. Almost seemed like this was the destined final. Yeah, I, I mean, every time you go into an event, you know Liz is going to be a contender. She's always there, and when it comes down to the top five, it's usually me and her somewhere within that mix of players. She's a fierce competitor. She's a teammate on Team USA. I know she's always going to make quality shots and, and very seldom makes a mistake. And, um, you know, I think, again, the lanes just were more playing more of an advantage for me than for her. Early on uh, in that match and also in the, in the match against Carolyn, it seemed like you were searching for it just a little bit. Uh, what, what, was, what was so hard about them out here today? It was really close. I mean, I could get the ball to the pocket, but trying to carry was going to be the key. And Carolyn had the same problem. She got the ball there. We both rung 10 a couple of times. Uh, I guess as a player, I just had to wait for the lanes to come to me. And once Carolyn broke them down a little bit more and Liz got on the pair, again, my ball was able to see, make a better motion in the back part of the lane and give me the carry I needed. And then you finally got that big run of strikes that nobody else seemed to be able to get. Uh, at, at what point did you start to feel like you, you'd really found it? Um, it was probably about in the seventh frame. Uh, I knew I made an adjustment on the, one of the lanes. I came a little bit high, and I was like, I moved left. I slowed my swing down a little bit and just tried to wheel the lane a little bit, again, into my wheelhouse and my advantage, and um, that's pretty much when I knew. And when I got up in the ninth frame and I struck, I, I pretty much knew I, I clinched it. Two wins on the women's series, the Queen's title. Tournament of Champions against the men, which no one's ever done before, and now the U.S. Open. They're gonna, people are going to say that this is the greatest season a woman bowler has ever had. What does it mean to you? I don't know about that. I mean, Carolyn was tops my, my rookie year on tour, winning seven titles. Um, you know, Kelly Kulik, I just I want people to say when they say my name that, you know, hey, she was a great bowler and a great person, and what she did was unprecedented, and what a spectacular year, a magical year that she did have. <laughs>